everyone and welcome back to the final day of Halton Makefest 2021. I can't believe we've done it. We've got here, it's the final week, final day of the week and what a fantastic day we've got. We are joined twice by Hazelhurst Studios. We've got two different artists in. Uh, first of all, we have got Rachel. How's it going? Uh, Rachel is going to be doing some awesome bubble painting with us and some fabric painting with us later on today but let's have a look at the team as well. So as always, monitoring our comments and seeing what you are all coming up with, we have Paul. How's it going, Paul? Morning, guys. Morning, everyone. Lots of comments coming through already. Fan fantastic. So let us, it's been great to hear that we've been getting comments from where you are, what you're up to, that you're looking forward to enjoying it. Where have we had comments from so far, Paul? Uh, we are in Glasgow at the moment. We're in Germany, uh, Rochdale, Birmingham, uh, where else? Uh, Cheshire, uh, Borenwood, Gloucester. Gloucester everywhere fantastic well it's great if you've got any questions for rachel's you want to tell us where you're from or you want to send in some images of how you're getting on with your bubble painting or fabric painting today please send them in to us we always love seeing them and yeah and reviewing them and letting them go as always uh, the man behind all the buttons and things like that we have ian pie here with us today hey ian how's it going last day how are you feeling it's all gone so far great we're nearly there we nearly hit that short and sweet from Ian, <laughs> as we get it. And last but not least, we have Andrew O'Brien, who's going to be wandering around getting us some fabulous shots. He's one of me. Yeah, lovely. Full body. <laughs> lovely, as we're going. So, uh, yeah, let's get cracking. So, Rachel, how's it going? I'm going to join you over here today. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to walk around, which is a little bit different <laughs> yeah. for me during one of these, uh, one of these sessions. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. How are you? I'm all right. I'm good. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So you're an artist at Hazelhurst Studio. Yes. Uh, do you want to give us a little bit of background about you and the types of art form that you work with? Yeah. So um, I predominantly work in uh, embroidery. So I draw and stitch with uh, thread. Uh, I create my own fabric, which is what we're going to go through a bit later on. Um, and then usually my work is based around narrative and storytelling, usually in single images on uh, on piece of big pieces of embroidery really fantastic anyone that was at Makefest last year you might yes. have seen you guys the you had the one of the, the awesome sewing machines that was that yes. was going doing patterns i think it's made it into the highlight reel this this year it's, it's really it. nice looking at the highlight reel and, and kind of re-seeing some of the different things yeah. and some really really impressive uh, embroidery and i remember you talking to me and telling me about kind of like the the pain and the, and the kind of like the amount of technique that it took to kind of get used to using those machines and making the designs and things like yeah. that yeah, yeah, it, it, it's a complicated, the, the machine, I still haven't quite got to grips with that, <laughs> I'm going to be honest, but yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's more technique based than you would first imagine, particularly machine embroidery. Yeah, so. definitely, uh, that part, of the, part of the craft of yeah. that fighting with the machine to one day do it <laughs> and one day not, not do it. Uh, brilliant, so what are we going to be doing today? So um, we're going to be showing you doing some bubble painting, so this is something that uh, myself and Claire, who's on this afternoon, uh, did with HPAN, which is the Holton Primary Art Network. Um, so it was a technique that they did for their primary school children. Um, it's really fun and it makes a really amazing noise, which oh, is why I really like it, I'm going to be honest. Um, and it creates really wonderful patterns. So we'll have a bit of a, how you actually make up the, um, the, the, the soap and the paint, because mm -hmm. it's actually quite important, the, yeah. the, the ratios. And then we'll do some printing and then we might do a bit of a competition later on. Fantastic. So uh, age-wise, wh what age range is this suitable so, for? So to actually make the paint, I would say probably a, a, over five mm -hmm. um just because there's a little bit of you have to get the consistency right a little bit if you've made the paint previously as long as your child understands the difference between blow mm -hmm. and not suck then they'll be able to do it not so not pointing the fingers at anyone but we heard a story this morning from, from one of the team members who didn't know the difference between uh sucking on the straw and blowing on the straw didn't we ian <laughs> yeah <laughs> when, when ian was younger uh family fun day i'm sure with uh, drinking yeah. drinking lots of paint and things like that i should point out i was four <laughs> at the time. that's all right yeah, so that, that, I think that's a real key one to yeah, this one, it, remembering to blow up down the straw. It's yes. one of the reasons why we use the poster paint for this as well, mm. rather than other paints, because if you do drink this by accident, it's not going to harm you too much. It's, it's, a, it's pretty safe. So. Fantastic. So but yeah. not drinking it on purpose, but hope if we do accidentally yeah, drink it, so it'll, it'll be fine. Not, yeah, we'll be fine. Fatal. We just might spit it out a little bit, but yeah. Brilliant. Um, so, right. yeah. Let, let's, get, let's get cracking then. Let's, well, let's start. So we're going to start with, you've got your measuring uh, jugs. Now, again, this isn't necessarily needed. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier to get the ratios mm -hmm. right. So we're going to do 10 mils of water. 10 mils of and water. And it's good to start with water because then your soap comes out a lot easier. Okay. Um, at the end. So I'm going to 
I am I am the uh, the kind of like not not assistant the kind of like the the standard person at home that's never done this yes, before so exactly. I'll be the one making the mistakes along with you at yeah. home as we go in so yeah. pouring this into so here pour it into the cup yeah and then you've got some uh, hand soap so what I will suggest is using uh, clear soap rather than coloured hand soap and it can be dish uh, dish soap as well mm -hmm. um, just because then the colour doesn't affect the paint so you've got clear paint so then you need twenty mils of this. So we're going back into our measuring jug. This, when I'm cooking at home, when I, I know this isn't cooking, but whenever I'm measuring anything at home, it's normally for cooking. I'm kind of I'm one of those guys that goes, just, I'm just going to throw it all in at once yeah. and then let, let, <laughs> try and do the maths on it. So yeah. Yeah, I'm up to 30 so far, mill then. In the, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the joy of this is that if you do get too much of a certain thing, that you can just chuck more in. Yeah. It's just, it's, it, it is easy and you, you lose less paint then if you, you know, if you do the, the ratios like this. Um, so we've got the 20 ml. So hopefully, yeah, it sm smells, smells quite nice, nice as yeah. well. Yes, yeah, this, this is the easiest clean up and it smells the nicest, this project. With the, with the current cell we're on as well, what, what, it's got to be one of the cleanest forms of painting. If we're, we're literally <laughs> mixing soap in with the yeah, paint as we're it, doing it's it. It's such an easy clean up, this one. And if you do use poster paint, it does just come off with soap as well. Uh, so you've got black, which is the easiest one to do. Nice, thank I've you. I've got yellow, which <laughs> is the hardest one to do. So um, you need 20 mils of this as well. Uh, same thing. So just to, just to kind of recap there, we've got we've got 10 mils of water, yep. 20 mils of soap, and then 20, 20 mils, mils of, of uh, paint. Yeah. Fantastic. So I'm going to get so I'm gonna the black. I feel like I'm some kind of like mad scientist. Yes, it Brilliant. does feel like this. And that's what's really great is that the, the, the project that we actually developed this for, well, that we, we, we filmed a video for, was all based about science and getting chemistry and things oh. into it, and with art as well. So we kind of felt that this process really worked with that. Yeah, definitely. So to get the last of your paint out, which is why we do the paint last, there's yeah. a bit of a, there's a stirrer there that you can then oh. scrape it out of the, the tube. You will get some on your hands, unfortunately. I've got plenty That's of these at home, lollipop sticks. Yes. yes. Any server will do. So if you've got like a spoon or something that you're happy to get paint on, that'll be fine. I'm glad that we've got the tarps down. I've already, I've already gone on the table <laughs> with it. Well, yeah. we've not got the fabric paint out yet, and that's the one that's stained. So this, this one's fine. This, this one washes fine. off. Good stuff. Um, and the biggest thing that people seem to get wrong on the internet is they just don't mix it enough. Okay, so, so you have to I'm mix to it now. for quite a while and make sure the paints and the soaps all kind of combined. Does it have, is it just kind of like, you, for to making sure it's all combined, we're just looking for that, uh, like a kind of consistent colour? Yeah, it's that consistent colour and, and it doesn't look like soap anymore. It right. hasn't got any sort of soap, what's the word, for velocity? Yeah, so, yeah. It's, yeah, so it's, it's almost like water. So it just looks of, like yeah. water again with a bit of paint in it, so you haven't got any of that, that soap in there. Um, if, so as we go through, there's, I'll tell you the, 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 what, what people can go wrong with mm -hmm. in relation to like, um, so if it, if it doesn't create bubbles, it means you haven't got enough water in. If it doesn't print onto the paper, you've not got enough paint in, and soap is usually not the problem. You don't need a huge amount of soap, so you don't usually need to add any more it's in. It's interesting, when you said, you know, when there's, if there's no bubbles, you didn't, I'd instantly go, soap? Oh, yeah, you uh, need more soap, you know, yeah. More soap, to more soap will make less bubbles, because it adds something to do, there's some sort of science in there that I don't understand, <laughs> that when you add water in, it will create more bubbles. If, so. if, if you're a scientist at home and you know why, uh, please, please let us know. I'm just seeing here, we've actually got Paul, Paul's got a comment or a question come through, is that right, Paul? Yeah, we've got a question about the paint, because people are obviously doing this at home. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so they're asking, uh, can they use acrylic or water, uh, watercolour paint instead of poster paint? Uh, it's just because they need to know if we're getting ready to set up. Yeah, acrylic paint uh, does work. See, oh, see, you've got it on yourself now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if giving me black, black was the no. right one. <laughs> At least it's on brand. Oh, um, yeah, acrylic acrylic should work, but obviously do be careful when you're breathing and, and, and blowing with the straws. I'm not 100% sure on watercolour. What we found was that the stronger the paint, the better you, you get. Because as, as you can see with the one that I did of a tester a little bit earlier, it's quite different in colour. So it's, it's a case of the darker, so watercolours are quite pale, yeah. so I don't know if that would work. But if you've got watercolours that are quite high pigmented, then it should work. If they've, if they've got both, a pro, uh, I'm guessing that acrylic, if you choose between the two of them, would probably be better. Is that yeah, right? If yeah, if you've got a choice between the two, I would go with acrylic. Uh, and one more, is there any type of soap that's better to use? So what types of soap? Hand use? soap and dish soap and just clear, basically. Liquid clear soap is the best thing to use, mainly because you're not affecting the colour then and, and 
and it's not affecting with that. So, yeah. Cool. That, that. No bars are safe. It's not going to work with them. Yeah. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure because uh, I was going to type that and then I was like, I don't want to say yes. <laughs> yeah. To yeah. That. yeah. yeah. Wrong. Brill. Brilliant. Yeah. So, uh, so sorry. Where were we? We were uh, we were mixing. We've got our we've got one ready. We've been talking yeah. about the different what could go wrong, wasn't it? We were saying yeah. No bubbles. We need more water. Yeah. Uh, if it's not printing on enough, you need more paint. Need more paint. Yeah. So, cool. so what we're going to do? So I know you've just mixed black. We're not yes. actually going to use that yet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to do the uh, yellow, blue, and red together. Okay. So we're going to put all those into the tray. Now, again, you don't need a tray to do this, but it makes them clear up at the end a lot easier because you've, it's all in one space, and, and you can put all the straws and everything inside, and, and you can just take that to the sink and. So you need a different straw for each colour. I would take the straw. sticks out so that you've got a flat surface to put your paper on. Fantastic. You can put, just put the sticks in the tray. Yeah, now. they can yeah. just go in the tray. Because also if you need to mix again, if you think actually the red's not strong enough, you've then got the, the stick right there. Perfect. So then it's a case of just blowing into the cups and making some bubbles, basically. Blow, blow not so Yeah, blow not so blow not so yeah. <laughs> yeah, and if you do the ones two, you can do two at a time if you're fancy. Oh, and then do the last one. Yeah. So if you do the two at the time slightly higher because it will drop as you're blowing up the third. Okay. Okay. So then you have to take the straws out mm -hmm. and get your piece of paper. Is that all right? Have I done all right there? Yeah. Oh, yours is well higher. Yeah, that's what I mean. So. You need to get them higher. You need to get higher. And then, and then you just literally... Pop it down. You don't want to put it too close to the cups because then you'll end up with a ring on the cup, which I may have done there. And then you end up with some bubble print. So you can uh, see on here, my yellow is really not very bright at all. So I'm actually going to add more yellow in. This is, yellow is the hardest one because it's the brightest colour. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to add more yellow into mine and do a bit more mixing. Yours I, look great. I think I about to say, I, got, I was a bit amateur. I went with the, uh, got the ring round the, the outside. But yeah, first, just to show first, that. First, first time, yeah. So if you <laughs> get a bit too close, Andy, can you pick up on mine there? You get a little bit too close, you get this ring around the outside of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm got, now I've seen uh, seen Rachel's first time. Get. I'm going to go going to go even. I'm going to yep. go much higher. Are these are uh, these? Are we going? Is it primary colours? These are the are primary, primary colours. So the joy of which I think you can see a little bit on mine with the with the red and the blue. But the, so, yeah, the red and the blue. You can just about see that there is some purple in there. Fantastic. All right. I'll, I'll... Um, so it's a really good way to learn about the colour wheel and secondary colours and things, which is why we've done the three colours today. All right. So you can use the same piece of paper as well. So you don't oh, have to okay. throw your piece of paper away. I didn't want that because I've got the ring on it now. Oh, I want, do I want, I want a fresh want. one. I want, I want a... <laughs> <laughs> you can do another one. Oh, yeah. I do feel like a mad scientist now. now I'm going... So you can actually see the mixing on the bubbles themselves. Um, so you can see the kind of colours uh, combining, which is really good. To go down. Oh yeah, there you go. The yellow's a bit better on that one now. And then you can actually pop the bubbles oh, as well on the card if you've got any. Just yeah, because that's fun, no other reason. <laughs> <laughs> Let me move that out of the way. So yeah, so you can then do the whole um, piece of paper like that and you can do quite a few. Yeah, I'm pretty chuffed with that. Yeah. A lot nicer, I think, that one, yeah. Um, and you can see how much paint you've actually used, which is barely anything. Mm. So these will last pretty much as long as, as people's attention spans will last, yeah. let's be honest. So, um, yeah, so we can cover that whole page or we can go on to a little bit of a competition if you wanted to. Should let's, we let's do it like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so I thought since the colours were yellow and black, yes. we would do yellow and black as Fantastic. the competition. So we can get rid of the reds Red. and... The blues. Red and blue, we'll put them there. Put the black in. Should I give this another stir or do you reckon it'll be fine from before? It should be okay, should yeah. Be okay. So we did test these overnight when we were when we were uh, making up the workshop. Yeah. Um, you can actually leave these overnight. Mm. You can actually leave them un un uh, uncovered, but we do suggest if you've got a container with a lid on, yeah. you can put them on. So if you were doing, <laughs> if you were doing, if you wanted to make it the night before, yeah. you could do that and then I, was, I just had a flash then of, of, of my house and just like coming down half in a daze in the morning and yeah, just and booting over them. like yeah. a black paint all yeah. over the carpet. So yeah, <laughs> maybe just for that reason alone, a cover over the top of it. And if you've got a cat, definitely, because yeah. they'll, yeah. just, they'll just knock it over. Um, so yeah, so you need a new straw for your black. 
Um, what we might do is we'll do one test just to make sure we've, you're happy with how much paint is in both. Okay. And then we're going to try and see who can fill three pages the quickest. Three pages the quickest. Yeah. All right, fantastic. And so, is that are we double dipping then to fill the pages with two? Because I'm looking on these and we've got we've got I'd say the majority of it's done. But would you suggest oh, going no, you, you've go got, multiple you've got pages? Space all the way over about here. To, so, so you'd I'm, have to I'm do gonna, three dips. I'm trying about to say I'm trying to I'm trying to get the best the best line up here. And also, remember, sure you've only I'm got not. two now, whereas that was three. Yeah. So you've got yeah. less less bubbles. So you, right. you, you've got a competition of like, do I blow bigger bubbles and cover more? But then if you go bigger bubbles, they will eventually go down the side of the cup, which you've then lost them. Uh, so, you know, it's it's a it's I a nap. Yeah, I don't know. So just, three just pages. So you know, I, I have a terrible record of this. I have never <laughs> won this. Even though I've done know. this a lot. That's so much worse. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was, I, if you'd have come in and gone, oh yeah, oh, yeah I'm, like I'm amazing at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then no, the no, pressure I have would have been lost, off. I have lost this time every time. So, you know, it's yours to win. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to get make sure I've got my pages lined up. So yeah, up, we'll do a going. quick tester one first, just to make sure your black okay. is is okay, and oh. then and my yellow. Oh, I've done my yellow, but we'll do it anyway. Okay, let's test this one. I'll just go yeah. on this page. That's lovely. Um, oh yeah, it's really nice, isn't it? The black is the best one. Um, because really it's like the darkest that. color. Yeah. So um, the other trick we actually found out as well is that if you um, your colors are slightly pale, you can add a tiny bit of black into your color and then it will boost it up a little okay. bit. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. But not a huge amount because then you end up with just black. So yeah. Obviously. So. Right. So we're going to do three pages. Three pages. Can you get me three pages ready? Say, yeah. I'm not messing about. Let's get rid of that yeah. one. I don't want to. Don't want to <laughs> smudgy my pages. I'll launch them down. Three full pages. All right. Three full pages. Right. You're going to count us in. Uh, go on then. Uh, I'm about to say, I, I want it to be. I don't want anyone ruling that I was cheating on this competition. I don't want them going. Sean was already. <laughs> Sean was already uh, there. As he was saying, three he was blowing bubbles. Well, that was saying <laughs> yeah. you saying it, so three. I'm already there. <laughs> go on, Paul. Where are we going from? Three. Uh, three, two, one, go. Yeah, I reckon. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh no. <laughs> Don't look at what you're doing, just pop. That's one. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh. Oh no, neck and neck. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a straw. I'm abandoning the straws now because I've got so many bubbles around the edge. Yeah! Oh, <laughs> I was going to go for a double dip on my last one. <sighs> yeah, you make a bit of a mess when you do. Oh, what yours? I was going to say I'm going to go for quality over quantity, and I looked at yours, and they're so much better. Well, I, I can't even I did, win on the I quality. <laughs> I did look over when you were doing it and thought, I think I've got this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But wow. yeah, so you can see, so you can make it quite a lot of fun. The other thing we did as well, which we haven't got a bowl big enough because we, you know, we wanted to limit the mess. Mm. You can get a really big bowl, make quite a reasonable amount of kind, and you can do like a really big bubble thing yeah. as well. Yeah. Couldn't. Could you do something, so I'm looking at mine and yours here where we've gone over the side a little bit. I guess you could even do a kind of like a whole tray and kind yeah, of like you, Yeah, you could do. Tray. So I did actually use that, that last one as me just literally going around the edge, which right. is why I finished so quick. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, you can use those excess bubbles to just get, just get those last bits in, so. Can we get a steward's inquiry on that then, please? If someone, if someone see, what the, see what the people in the comments for when, when they're going. We had, <laughs> yeah, who won? Who won barely? Uh, we've, had, we've had quite a few comments. Um, We've had a few comments saying, come on, Sean, you, you've got this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to whoever wrote that because I clearly didn't. <laughs> uh, um, I feel bad. Uh, I should have done it before. I should have shouted out to my niece and nephew who are watching, oh, Georgia and Ewan, they're doing it. Fantastic. Um, and saying it's really, really cool. People are enjoying doing it. And uh, I think that's pretty it's, much it's it. It's a really lovely, and you can make loads of loads of card and, 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 and you can do it on paper as well. The thinnest we went was printer paper and it mm. does crinkle a little bit, but it, because you're not getting the paper really wet, mm. it does still work. 
I quite like on some of the other ones over here, particularly I was kind of going around and popping the bubbles. I'm just yeah. looking at the ones that we've done where we've been a bit of a rush and we've done it and not popping them, all, like the kind of the outline of the yeah, bubbles make... is a little bit thicker, don't they, yeah. in terms of where they're doing it. So yeah. it's quite nice that depending on what, uh, what type of like a uh, kind of texture or what type of pattern you're looking for you yeah. can you can go around either blowing on them or popping them themselves you're looking for like a nice kind of watery color type effect or yeah. you're looking for those really thick outlines of the particularly the black and the yellow ones you can kind of see where the where it's with the this paint soaked yeah. in a little bit longer before it's and popped that that'll be as well because we've been blowing them quite quickly so we've produced quite a lot of bubbles that yeah. you've then ended up with with the kind of more in-depth sort of I can't. I it. can't decide. What it's, it's quite nice because it's uh, well, like quite a lot of art. You can, there's no right and wrong. Is it? Do you know no. I mean, like it's very much kind of like about what you want what you to want to do with it. Time, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we we use them on the project to create soap boxes. So that was that was the kind of the the, the kind of link back. That's why we use soap because it, the project was all about soap. And these were boxes that we just we did this this technique with this mm -hmm. actual card, and then you just get a box template draw it on the back and cut it out and then you've got a lovely gift box that you could also use or some packaging and things like that and they're great because it is just poster paint so this will be difficult different if you're using acrylic or um say watercolor paint mm -hmm. it, i don't know how pens would react but the poster paints you can just draw straight over the top so you can actually do really nice designs on them as well that's really cool i know that um oh this is quite a good nice place to plug your your social media i think it was on the the Hazelhurst one where I saw you done uh, use these as background for one of our favorite things animation yes. like a, a wizard fight yes. is that right oh, yeah, I had yeah so much fun doing that uh, <laughs> is, is that would that be on the Hazelhurst uh, ones or yeah there, own? Sh there should be a blog post for that isn't there YouTube oh yes it's on YouTube yeah Fantastic. So we've got some of the Hazelhurst social networks that have that have, that have come up. That I can't remember. I know that with you guys it's a little bit tricky. So that's why we've got Ian to do some on-screen graphics. So there we go. So on Facebook, it's Hazelhurst Studios. Uh, on Twitter, it's Hazelhurst Art, A R T at the end. And on Instagram, it's Hazelhurst Artists. If you're anything like me, dyslexic, I every time I go to tag you guys on something, I always go E L after yeah. for Hazel, yeah. L E and Hazel. That's that's the thing that, that tricks me up. And uh, you were talking about a blog post there. So if you head over to hazelhurststudios.co.uk, uh, you can check out all the blog posts. We're going to be talking about one of the blog posts in particular yes. uh, in a little bit. Just before we move on, Paul, did we have another comment or question come through? We've got two more questions. Lovely. Um, so uh, people are asking, um, do you let the bubbles pop naturally or is it better for you to pop them? It, as, as, as Sean was saying, it's, it, it, you get different effects. So if you pop them naturally, that, that paint then disperses and you kind of get like slightly watercolour effect. So this is slightly more paler look. Um, but the, so this is the slightly more paler sort of side of things. But if you leave them so you can see the ones that we were popping with the black and yellow, the ones we did really quickly, you can see that they're really quite dark. So, and you leave them and then you can leave them to pop naturally. Um, the, it, it just depends on what you want to do. Mm. So if you want those darker colors, then yeah, I would leave them and then let them pop naturally. If not, then you, know, you can pop them. And, but it depends on how vigorous you've been with how quick you're blowing, because if you've if it's quite a gentle blow, <laughs> the the uh, the uh, the bubbles pop naturally quite quickly, so you lose that kind of darker um, colour. So yeah. it's actually That's quite a science to it. I'm going to be honest. It's not as <laughs> as someone said as well. Can you use fabrics, or could you get this effect on fabric? No, really. Um, sadly, I was gutted because it was the first thing I tried because I yeah. completely work in fabric, and sadly, no. And I even tried it with fabric paint just to make doubly sure. It, the, because the way the fabric works, it just literally disperses the paint and it just absorbs in. So you just can't do it on fabric paint, oh, sadly. Okay. Fan cool. Fantastic fabric. question though, really yeah, good. Yeah, really good yeah, question, yeah. yeah. Uh, as we were saying before, if you've got any questions, we're gonna keep coming back to yeah. Paul and stuff. It's great to see that we've had so many people commenting and getting in touch with this stream. We, we always like that. So keep them coming in and we'll keep just stopping and answering them um, as we're going through. Uh, so yeah, fantastic bubble painting. And, and as well, you say, I think that it's, it's lovely as an art form of itself or yeah. with, um, with, with projects with like this, when we're looking at the Hazelhurst soap boxes and things like that, it becomes almost like the background for the art, yeah. the artwork. So it, there are lots of different ways that you can use it. The other thing, just very, very quickly, yeah. if you do do it on printer paper, that does mean that you can actually then put it through the printer. 
So you could then print a design that you've got oh, on the computer on top. Lovely. So, so right. yeah, but only right. works with printed paper. Or if your if your printer can handle thicker paper, then obviously yeah. you could do it with that. But thinking about, so I'm instantly thinking you know, wedding invitations, things like that. Yeah. Looking at completely like kind of customizing, yeah. no two the same. Because they photocopy beautifully as well. So oh. if you've got, so they scan in really nicely, yeah. and actually the colors get a lot more vibrant as well. Um, so you could do one piece that you really liked, and then use that for your background for pretty much everything then. Brilliant. Just before we move on to our next section, just wanted to have a chat a little bit about uh, Hazel Hair Studios and particularly yeah. the uh, the Draw and Halton project that's going yeah. on at the moment. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so um, so part of Hazel Hair Studios, we did this during the first lockdown. Um, it was a draw, we called it Draw and Halton, so that was, we were currently in Draw and Halton 2. So the first lockdown was we created, was 18 prompts for the first one? I can't remember how many did in the end. Was it 16? 16 prompts that were based around something to do with Halton. Um, and then we asked members of the public to uh, send in bits of artwork. It could be photographs, it could be a sketch, it could be anything. And then we've then created a bit of a, an online blog and it's also on exhibition in the Old Town Bloomers Garden, mm. which is a project that we work with quite a lot as well. That, that was something that I really loved about it. I remember seeing it all over social media and the different yeah. you know, people. And it was, it's fantastic to see the people's digital work when it's coming through. Uh, so by digital, I mean the photos, or it can yeah. be digital as well. And yeah, yeah. But, uh, but I really loved, especially at the moment where we're, we're all locked down and things like that. And the idea of an exhibition is you normally, I guess, think of going into a building, yeah. having maybe a drink. Uh, yeah. Yeah. As, you, yeah. as, you, as you're looking around at it, absolutely. Um, but like the the old town Bloom, I think we're going to speak about it a little bit more later yes, on. Yes, probably a bit more uh, later on. Yeah. Uh, but is 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 a fantastic uh, community garden area, yeah. and and you had put the uh, exhibition up in there, so people could go at their own time, still yeah. be outside, a lot more safer yeah. at the moment, and things like that. And so, just a brilliant idea, I thought, a yeah. way of making sure that the artwork got out there. So yeah, so, so we decided to do it again. So we actually got some very lucky to get some arts council funding to do a bit of research in relation to what. Um, how we can deliver mm. visual art in Halton and we decided to use Drawn Halton again mm. as a way of connecting with people and how they they like to create art and it's great because we have our professional artists have been creating things and then also just everyday people and their lovely photographs which we'd absolutely love to see um, and we also have got our work experience students involved and they've been creating prompts and they'll be doing a slightly bigger piece based on one of the prompts particularly um, the, the hopefully Draw and Halton 2 will go on exhibition in the Culture HQ unit at the oh, Hong Kong Shopping yes. City. So we're hoping people can go and visit that um, uh, physically when it's actually up because that should be in at the end of April. So fingers crossed everybody at least will be able to go and visit uh, on their own. Mm. Um, if not, then we're going to try and do some like online videos of the space and hopefully there'll be some quite big pieces done by our work experience students, by myself and Claire and some of our other professional artists as well. Fantastic. So. What an amazing place. I mean, I, just you mentioned in work experience, uh, what an amazing place to be able to come and do, do work experience. How have yeah. you found, obviously I'm sure it's been very different to how you would normally experience yeah. a work experience with, with, with the current lockdown and, and things like that. How has it been uh, for you and for the work experience it's, people? Uh, it's it's been, it's been interesting. So it's, we had two work experience before with lockdown and they came and visited us a few few times and it was great to see them and work with them on some actual techniques uh, we've actually then had a further two but they've never we've never physically met them um, and they've never been to the studios but they're really engaged and they and because of draw and halt and we've been able to set them these mm. tasks that we're doing and these art the tasks that we're doing and everything so they've been engaging quite a lot and it's been quite interesting that normally we would have been saying right let's try this technique out and let's try this technique out because we've got those equipment whereas they haven't had access to that. So it's been more led by them, mm. which has been really interesting and actually has changed the way we've kind of thought about that a little bit mm. because actually it should be coming from them and what they want to do. Yeah. So we can say, okay, you want to do this particular type of artwork and then we can then I guess help supplement yeah. that. But you know, it's, it's that interesting. I guess that's that's the real thing with you getting work experience to go into an artist studio. You're, you're probably expecting that you're going to have young people that are artists or on the way yeah. to becoming artists themselves. So yeah, it sounds like a brilliant idea, yeah. letting them lead you know the kind of the concept of what they're doing. I mean, I think that we've all become massive. Of, um, uh, constraint uh, over the over yes, lockdown where yes, we've not definitely. quite had the materials we might not have had the equipment that we needed we might just want to try something new and, and try a new skill but we've not got the money to buy a 3d printer or, or yeah. a laser cutter or whatever or it may even be. just have access yeah. to printing presses and yeah. things like that so. so uh so it sounds really interesting though and, and a great, yeah. great opportunity for them brilliant so um 
what we're going on to next. So we're going to do some fabric print, printing. So we're going to have to quickly clear some of these bits and pieces away. And then I'm going to have a big piece of fabric come out. And then I'm going to be doing, throwing some paint around. Perfect. Hopefully not get any more. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going, to, <laughs> I'm going to see how, how much paint I can get on me at the time. I'll tell you what, while we're cleaning up and having a go at this, why don't we pop over to Paul, who can uh, have a chat to us about what's been coming through from the audience members and things like that. A comment come through in response to actually putting this bubble paint onto fabric that could oh. work because uh, they were saying as uh, you could scan it into the computer you could scan Ooh. that image into the computer and then transfer that image That's onto some uh, printer you know the printer paper effect that you can iron onto clothes uh, yeah. so that was a workaround someone's give us I love that printer That's paper where you can just you can print off a design and, and get it on there. I'm, yeah. I'm a big fan of what we what, what this my nerd say. What I'm currently doing as as gifts for a lot of people is photoshopping the, the face onto someone else's body and then <laughs> putting that onto a t-shirt for them. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's, there, there is a fantastic website called Spoonflower, right. um, and you can upload any photograph or any digital design, and then they'll turn it into a repeat pattern for you, oh, and you can good. get that actually printed directly onto the fabric into huge. Um, as, much, as big as you want, really. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's a great idea. I'm going to be honest, I hadn't thought of that. Um, and we've also got a question uh, saying, have you ever tried uh, to do this with uh, watercolour paper? So have you ever tried to do paper. bubble painting onto watercolour paper? We didn't, because we wanted to keep it as, as, as accessible as possible when we did okay. it. Thank you, Sean. Um, which, so what I would imagine it would work really well, because the, the, the kind of watercolour paper is just designed to for the paint to sit on top so yeah. yeah I think that would work really really well do we need this uh, I do thank Fantastic. you very much so I think that's one of the things that we've, we've tried to do with Horton Makefest uh, as much as possible is make it so that um, you're gonna hopefully have a lot of the materials already with you at home so yeah. it's sometimes quite challenging when you're coming to do a workshop where you're used to having potentially professional uh, yeah. materials and loads and loads of resources for you and then you kind of I know that when lockdown came for us at Maker we we used to kind of take drones to places and things like that and loads of iPads and bits and bobs to be able to do workshops and um, when we when the lockdown hit we were like, oh well we can't can't, we can't do that, do that anymore yeah, and so we were, trying, got them. we were looking around uh, I was comparing it to uh, to that scene in Apollo 13 where you're just kind of like looking around going what can we how can we make something out of this stuff so that it works and <laughs> yeah. so uh, I'm sure that it was pr a pretty similar process for you making sure that you know what what are people possibly going to have at home and if they yeah. don't already have it at home What's, cheap and easy to get a yeah. hold of to be able to do it the bubble painting we really wanted to make sure that you could go into a supermarket and buy everything you needed and go home again mm. and 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 pretty much everything that you could you could get some form of what we've got today yeah um to do that with basically yeah. so but yes right let's get a bit messy I'm about to say I'll, i'm going to leave this i have <laughs> double printing I'd, I'd kind of heard of and, and kind of had an, a bit of an idea about what it was but but fabric painting i have literally no idea so yeah over to you so we're we'll pouring yeah. water on the fabric to yeah begin with. so this is this is the technique that i developed to to paint large pieces of fabric and to start with the reason why i do it on large pieces of fabric is because um you end up with really lovely happy accidents so i'm going to do yellow and black again to start with just you know in honor of today i, I should uh, point out at this point this is one that we're we're not saying just get a big get your curtains and you start no. lashing paint on them this uh, were we, curtains though yeah yeah so. <laughs> we've got here to do this we've got a massive piece of tarp down yeah. and, and we've, we've kind of prepared the scene already so this is something yeah. that most people probably wouldn't be doing this size. Yeah, yeah yeah but you could do a similar sort of kind of techniques on t-shirts or on bags as long as it's cotton and the fabric paint will take mm -hmm. basically so the kind of technique that i usually do is to just basically throw as much paint down as possible uh, the reason why i poured water on to start with is yeah. because then the fabric is then in a position to start absorbing the paint sure so if it, if it just you can see here on the on the dryer bit that it's kind of you can see the brush marks which mm -hmm. is nice and you might want to have that yeah but to get a first kind of block color down mm -hmm. i usually wet the the fabric and then you end up with this kind of lovely watercolor effect would that have a bit of a kind of yeah like a gradient effect, effect i'm guessing yeah. so like from where you're first putting on the paint it'll yeah. like slowly absorb it outwards whereas if it was dry it would pretty much just 
go on that spot and stay and stay there. Yeah, yeah. yeah which i'm going to be honest there's, there's certain certain samples that i'll literally i'll probably do that on the other half of sure. the table uh, is i literally just squeeze it straight out of the bottle oh, okay and onto the tabac the reason it, to do it this way is because the black is so strong mm. to do that would be quite yeah. you'd end up with really strong which you may not necessarily want but I, having said that i do quite like this bit that, that which bit is quite middle. nice i think it, I, I have seen some of your kind of finished fabric paints and i guess it's so uh, different to like standard you know painting the walls something like that. Well, you're, going, yeah. you're going for that very clean very like one yeah uh, I don't firm color it's, it's almost the opposite i guess what you're wanting with uh, with fabric painting yeah so it, it you know i literally just chuck it around <laughs> like like there's nobody business oh dear. so yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah it doesn't look too inviting at the no moment. it looks really horrible <laughs> yeah, at the minute yeah. so because uh, the fabric paint that i use actually i get from um the halton play center oh, you know on in, in, in runcorn yes, so it's just the, this is the bottles they usually have but last time i went i think i got I got lucky or did i get these ones online no i think i got those ones online but these ones so these ones you get from Halton play center mm. and they're great they're so good so they do slightly separate as they've done here with water so you do have to mix them quite a lot but the way that i use them i just paint that in so it's not a massive deal for me let's have a big up to Horton play center oh, it, it, they're if, amazing if, if you've not been there already it, it's like an aladdin's cave of like yeah. you just have no idea what you're going to get when you go in you start and you kind of you go in going i want to get some hoops or i want to get this yeah and you come out with uh all sorts of crazy stuff because it's just it's, it's, every time you go in there's something different there and there's all sorts. Uh, what i really like about it as well is that uh, you can buy things independently as well so you can get exactly what you need so if you just need yeah. one color paint or if you suddenly need loads of different bits and bobs you don't have to buy a 200 pack of anything or anything yeah, like you that you can, can just the, go and get in what, what you want in. yeah uh, i guess it's sometimes whenever i go in there i try and keep such an open mind <laughs> because you have to go, if you go in there going this is just what i want you don't get any of the enjoyment of uh of seeing all the other stuff that they've got out there joyce the fantastic member of, of, oh. of, of uh holton uh, and has been around delivering all sorts of arts projects and, and youth projects for young people as well as part of the short breaks i know yeah. they're, they're all doing the, all sorts of things so absolutely amazing up. and what's great is you can go in there and you can come out with an arm load of stuff and still have your arm and leg yeah as well it's it's you know they're, they're amazing and i genuinely don't know what a lot of people would do in relation to art and no. doing cheap craft and like the bubble painting you could get everything you needed there definitely literally yeah. everything you needed i think they were doing an online delivery at one point but i'm not 100 mm. percent sure whether they're still doing that so yeah. you'd have to obviously look on their social media i think it is changing yeah i'm the same i have seen them mention it but i'm not 100 sure but yeah check them out i'm sure if you, yeah. if you google um Houghton play center you'll you'll uh, you'll you'll find them and you'll be able to uh, find out how they're doing it and how they're operating yeah. at the moment. Uh, so we mentioned uh, Culture HQ uh, before, and um, that's that's a fantastic uh, kind of opportunity that's that's starting at, at the shopping centre in, in Runcorn. It's yeah. it's kind of just getting set up at the moment, isn't it? But it's, it's for we are in the Borough of Culture year yes. 2021, so we're holding Holton's Borough of Culture. So they've set up a centre at the shopping city that is going to be the home for lots of different events. We've actually just got a, a big community program project uh art project that's going to be starting the in oh a month or so time we've got it we're just trying to get it delivered there at the moment actually sneak behind the scene but it, but it looks it looks amazing but we'll, we'll tell you more about that uh another time but yeah loads of people getting involved in it when did you say that you're hoping to be in the uh, uh, for yours our installation dates are the last two days in april so it will be up in the first couple of weeks in may is that's our first one so yeah. then we have another three at uh, three throughout the year um, we have a summer exhibition and a winter exhibition and i think there was another print one as well at some point yeah so we're, we're in there quite a lot and we're hoping to do to get a lot of our artists in to do residencies and just to create art in that space yeah. as well so we're hoping to be in there quite a lot over the year i'm, I'm loving so. this on brand col colorage that we're getting you really starting to yeah. see the mix of the colors how they're going into each other now so one of the things i just yeah is is great and this is a really good way of getting these kind of weird blobs is that when you're getting to the end of your paint bottle is don't throw away the paint just fill it full of water and then you've got more paint to do more stuff with and you can create kind of slightly blob effects and and, and things like that and then you can also uh get some flick effects as well which i'm going to do with white in a minute as well because it's really lovely so this is where i'm so worried about getting it on everyone because i'm usually a lot more violent <laughs> than this but I'm, 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 I've already ruined this. I know. Stuff, don't worry about it. Why I'm in these, these clothes because it just it goes shield. everywhere. So it's like, and then so there's techniques that you can like you can hit the uh, the, the uh, paintbrush on your hand. So um, before anybody says, because I'm sure somebody will say mm. you could use a toothbrush, you can. But when you're doing it on this scale, 
and you're doing this with a toothbrush, <laughs> it takes a while. Yeah. So if you're doing it slightly smaller, maybe you do yeah, it, yeah. A toothbrush of, would be great. Piece but, of a, a4 fabric or something like that. Yeah, yeah. or you know, you, you can get you can get lovely canvas bags that are about that sort of size, and you oh, can do yes. that. Uh, if you are going to do it at home, the word of warning is, is is try not mix all the primary colours together. Okay. Because if you mix all the primary colours together, you end up with brown. Mm. Which, if that's what you want, great, yeah. go for it. But if you don't, then you know it kind of makes. <laughs> I, always, I always remember that from doing art at primary school. Like, it felt like no matter what I did, or what I, I always tried to get purple and end up with brown. Like that was, like, yeah. I was like, okay, a nice vibrant purple, brown every time. Every yeah, time. it's really, really difficult primary. to get brown. I usually end up not brown. It's very easy to get brown. It's difficult to get purple. purple. I always usually end up wasting a load yeah. of paint. I, I believe we've got a couple of uh, comments and questions come through. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we've got uh, a few questions coming in uh, regarding the fabric painting. Uh, so uh, what's the best fabric to use and does it have to have a cotton content? It, it does have to have a co cotton content because otherwise the fabric paint will wash off. Okay. Um, I use whatever I can get hold of <laughs> in relation to <laughs> cotton. So as I said, this I think this was the lining of a curtain that I stole from somebody else at the studio. Um, you can use old bed sheets. Um, you can use... Um, just random little bits of cotton. You can, I always do it on white or cream because then I can manage the color. Okay. Um, but you can do it on different colors as well and different cottons. Um, the best, the place that I absolutely love and I'm gutted it's not been open for a while is actually I get my fabric from Lady Hayes up in Fodgham. Okay. Um, because they have an antique shop part of the section and they actually have huge um, tablecloths that are like three meters long and they're fantastic quality cotton. So if you want cotton, go to Lady Hayes and get, or somewhere similar that's got an antique place when they open again, obviously. Yeah. And you've got huge amounts of uh, cotton that you can Options. use and recycle and things. So I try and recycle as much as possible. Yeah. But you do need a small amount of cotton content because the fabric just won't take if it was. If you're not sure, mm. do a tester and then put it in the wash if you are intending to wash it. And if it works and does what you want, then count happy days just you know go for it basically. yeah uh, we've got another question to do with yeah. that as well sorry um what's the best uh, fabric paint to use or what brand of fabric paint to use so i use the cheapest ones i can find because i'm cheap <laughs> uh, i have no idea what brand this is uh no idea like i say these are from play the, the help and play council these ones you can get online the scholar fabric paints they are great um, and you can get them, they're really cheap. I think they're like eight ninety nine for a set of six of different oh, so colours. So they're yeah, really good really, quality. Really, really cool price, um, yeah. I know there is online these tiny little bottles that are like nine pound each. Okay. I have used them, they're great and they do what you need them to do, but they're not worth the money, personally. Okay. For, what, for this, they're yeah. certainly not worth the money. The other place I get from is a thing called a crafty art place, which is down south somewhere. Mm. I'm not sure exactly where. I buy my white from there because the white is the one that I use a lot to mix with all the other paints and this is such good quality. Um, so you can see on the, you can see the kind of quality of that, that paint, it's just really nice and smooth and just really lovely. Um, so that's the only one that I buy, but that's £15 a bottle. So, okay. yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's still not as, just, just don't buy those little ones, they're, <laughs> they're total rip-offs, they really are. <laughs> Brilliant. So some great advice there. So if they're not, if someone's not lucky enough to have um, a kind of a Halton Play Council close to them or the nearby where they can go in and, and get hold of it and things like that, yeah. is it easy enough just to get online and you yeah. search for it? If you things? search on um, Amazon or just online generally or eBay, mm. um, the Scola one, so S S C O L A, mm. fabric paint, you can get them in bigger bottles. Um, yeah. They're pretty easy to find. It's 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 worth looking around for the bigger bottles for the small for the uh, for the, the more cost effective um, I think I used to when I wasn't sure exactly where to get them from I used to put children's fabric paint so that it was a bit cheaper yeah so but yeah so I'm, I'm loving pretty just on this just on this bit here we've got two like kind of completely it feels like two completely different designs just from similar you know, similar colors we've got these splodges of, yeah. of yellow and, and a very dark background and on this side we've got that kind of a 
rock and roll splash yeah. effect from a, with, the, with the black on the yellow. So I can't decide which one I like better. The, so the joy is so the difference in the factor. So you can see on this fabric paint, you've got the really long lines of splashes. Yes. That's done with this really fat brush that I found somewhere. Mm. I genuinely have no idea where I got this from. Um, which creates, so you, your brushes do create different effects. So that slightly more sporadic splatter mm. is done with this more, the, the flatter brush. Flatter blush. So it's okay. So you can play around with what brushes you've mm. got again. Again, you do not need to spend a lot of money on brushes. You can just buy the cheap stuff. Mm -hmm. I think the one that I used to do the big covering are these big ones that you get from Wilco's. Oh, I've got a few of those. At yeah, home. I think yeah, everybody's yeah. got a few of those. Yeah. And the joy of we're doing it with fabric paint is you don't have the issue of you, when you're using them for actual painting mm. and the brussels come out. It's, yeah. It doesn't work, do that with fabric paint because there's no solvent. Brilliant. So it's fine. Um, so yeah, so I think we'll move on to a couple of other colours that I yeah. would normally do. Because um, I'm going to be honest, yellow and black is not my usual. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> so I'll do I'll do a dry start, so you can see the difference. A dry um, start. A dry start, so you're not doing a just a wet one. And what's great as well, the reason, the other reason why I do it on these big pieces. So sometimes if I need, so if I'm doing a larger piece of work, mm. I'll do one set of colour, so I do that the whole yeah, cross. Yeah. If I want just need some fabric to bulk my mm. stock up again, um, I'll do. Um, uh, I'll do another set of colours and then you end up with this really lovely strip down the middle mm. where the two colours combined and you end up with really weird accidents that you wouldn't get if you do them on separate pieces of fabric. Fantastic. So, so we know, I, I can tell from looking at this, that the fabric painting is, is beautiful almost like within itself, but we can also use it within uh, as background. So just yeah. as, as you splodged that on there, we've got, we've got Claire who's going to be on later on. We've got one of your, uh, one of your pieces yeah. of artwork there, which is, do you want to talk us through that a little bit? So this was a piece that I created about the uh, rhyme, um, about the magpies, you know, one mm. for sorrow, two for joy. So it actually has uh, pretty much every type of uh, embroidery that I do on it. So the rings are machine embroidery, electronic machines. So that, that machine I had at Maker Fest yes. did those. And then the, the large magpies are freehand machine embroidery. So it's me sat there on a machine, just <laughs> sewing them. Yeah. And then the individual portraits is me hand sewing. So wow. sitting there for quite a while. So it did take, I think this one took me about 12 months to create. It's, it's not solidly sat there for 12 months. I probably feel solidly sat there, it'll probably take me about a month. Yeah. But because it was like one of those ongoing projects that you have in the background. So, so, the, so the fabric paint, the, the, the fabric that it's on, started exactly the same. Yeah. It's exactly the same process. You can definitely see that kind of like yeah. the, the wave of colors, the gradients uh, between it and things like that. Yeah. And, and kind of like building it on top of that with the, uh, with the and inter really interesting like you say, that, that, that kind of combination of, of uh, kind of pre-designed uh, embroidery, embroidery that you've done digitally and then that hand embroidery as well that yeah. you've been doing with the machine as well. Brilliant. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, that one was a bit of a passion project because I absolutely love that. There's a, there's a song by an Unsanks, which is a folk band, which is based on that that um, nursery rhyme. Is it? Would it be nursery rhyme? Um, and it's just an amazing, amazing poem that I absolutely loved it. So. And uh, for uh, for you as an, I mean, I know we've talked about the work that you've been doing with Hazelhurst and all that, but uh, as an individual artist, it, do you take uh, kind of commissions for, for for projects like that, or do you make them and then sell them afterwards? How does that work for you? So usually, I would. Uh, for those sort of projects, it's a personal sort of project that I decide to do, and yeah. then I will then photograph that piece and then sell that as prints, mm -hmm. as well as selling the original. Because as you can imagine, it, it, it like I say, it took me 12 months to make yeah. the solid lot. It, it, it is quite an expensive yeah. piece of work in the end because of the time it takes. So not everybody can afford that, and I'd like to try and make it accessible yeah. for everybody. So yeah, so there'll then be prints of that that people can buy and cards and stuff. And I'm trying to make them so that they're the actual same size. So you almost get the same sort of piece. Yeah. But um, in in paper rather than how, how How is that once you've worked on something for like a year, you know, years before going into it, and you kind of get that final stitch in there or the final section where you go, do you know what? It's completely done. Is it, is it hard to then let go or is it, is it, it really isn't, where you're, it really you're isn't. Like, I'm done with this now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Usually what happens is uh, if, because I've done, a, I've done an even bigger piece, which we couldn't bring today because it wouldn't fit in my car, yeah. um, which I had to make that within a two month period. Mm. And by the end of that, I was so stressed that I was just like, I don't want to sew ever again because it was just so quick. Um, so it, it's, it's a kind of, Yes, it's a, it's a relief, and there's actually this this a huge satisfaction of I've done this and yeah. it's it's finished and it's ready to go. But also because it takes so long, 
my design processes mm -hmm. as an artist you usually you know you're constantly improving and developing your craft by the time I finish that I can point out four or five different things that I'd be like I would do that differently now yeah. so yeah. that's that's the only downside is you're like I could I could make that better but I don't have time yeah. so uh, well, uh, that, that's great. If somebody uh, would be interested in looking at your art, purchasing your art, what's the, where's the best place for them to go? The best place to uh, to go at the moment is to have a look on my website. I haven't currently got anything on sale mm -hmm. because I'm, we're being commissioned by Hazelhurst to do a lot of stuff through that. But yeah, if you keep an eye on my uh, my blog or my uh, social medias, particularly Instagram, the one Instagram's the one that I most update. And on my blog, you can keep up to date with what I'm doing and seeing some things on there. So. Thanks very much. Ian's just put up the, your, your Instagram, which is Rachel Prime. It's uh, Rach, and then it's A-E-L. A-E-L, uh, very Prime. specific. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, have, we got a, have we got a card for the uh, for the website there as well? Oh, Twitter, let's get, let's get Twitter on there as well. Oh, yeah, Rachel, Twitter. Rachel Prime. But it's amazing that you've got your own your own name as your as your handle. That's, that was, must be rare. That, yeah, yeah, it probably is, actually. It, that, that's a, a, a crossover from when I was at university and I didn't know what I was doing and we were told to make social media so I was like I'll just do it my own name then. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, Luckily, so, I'm so jealous I wish I could get my own my own name yeah yeah there's not many Rachel Primes in the world I'm going to be honest wow. there's, there's, there's I think you, there's a website that you can find out how many people are called you and there's I think there's like two other Rachels fantastic primes, but yeah, uh, anyway. I think I saw Paul do we have a, a question come through or something like that or have I just uh, dropped you in it there when the when <laughs> <laughs> not come through uh, I thought I saw your head nod saying as you might just been nodding along with us as, as, as we're going you no know, uh, we have got a lot of people commenting fantastic um saying it's fantastic they're having good fun doing it um we've just had a comment just come through saying uh, the magpies are amazing how do you do how do you produce the prints uh, so the magpies amazing. How do you produce the prints? So I wonder. If she, I wonder if they're asking about the kind of the digitization of yeah. it. Maybe. Yeah. So. So so I would be photographing them um, with my a DSLR and a high quality camera, mm -hmm. um, and then that then I would then edit them slightly on the computer because obviously you don't necessarily get the true mm. colours on the photograph. Yeah. Um, and then that would then be sent off to a printer to be, to be printed basically. And for you with that process, is that a case of um, you kind of like you'll get a certain amount of them made, or, do you, or is it? Is it, is it I, I, I no idea as an artist, it kind of, so, as they come through, you just order them each, each one at a time, or how does that my work? My intention is to create a, a limited number that I order, so Perfect. I have a small stock, yeah. and then after that it will be on a case by case, case, by case. just because I don't have the storage for yeah. Huge amounts of prints and things, yeah. but yeah, it's interesting how like how how digital how things like that will, will have adapted as an artist and yeah. things that you'll be able to it's, do. It's enabled embroiderers because there's there's a whole there's a whole campaign a kind of a society a community online of embroiderers that, that they, this is how they make their money mm. because as you can imagine if you're embroidering say twelve pieces a year mm. you're not going to make. A huge amount of money yeah, you're not gonna be able yeah. to live off that but if you can then turn them into cards or yeah. you know develop them and, and stitch them smaller and then blow them up on digitally you can, you can wow. make a lot of things yeah. um so yeah i, I don't know if you want to have a quick yeah, look at the look difference at between the, the the wet and dry method so obviously it's still pretty wet now yeah. <laughs> but you can see the colors are a lot more mm. Bold. I thought, you know, at first I was, I was like, oh, that's that's the cloth coming through. And I think at some point it is, but obviously it's, you've been using you've been yeah, using white, white as so well. So this this yeah. is white. Yeah, so yeah, white, but that yeah. but that is cloth. That is cloth. It's, it's harder sometimes. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you know what? I'm glad that I did think that was. I did think that was cloth. Then I think I saw that. I was like, oh, it's not. It's white. No, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just that bit that I think but is you, white. So you're you, getting this real kind of like the green is so rich there compared to the, the yeah. kind of, again the, the watercolor effect. But again, I, I guess it's very similar to the bubble painting where there's no. Right it just wrong. depends it on just, what you want to yeah. use it for. So, so, so if I was going to use it on another piece of embroidery, um, so the, uh, I was thinking the bird piece, Claire, actually, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got, got Claire, who is going to be on later on with us, helping us by, by helping demonstrate and, and, yeah. uh, and have a look. Yeah, so those two. Yeah. Fantastic. So we'll get Claire into the light um, so that she so, can So these two these. are on the more bold print so the bowls are lit they were done mm. on sort of more dry kind of method mm. and that's because i knew there was going to be a really contrasty bird and design on that whereas the magpie piece i wanted the fabric to kind of almost be similar in color so that's yes. why i did the more muted colors because then the design will pop out so it just depends on what you're going to use it for i think they look really nice in the small print actually as well it's, yeah when you, when you showed that this, big one I, I really saw that you know, saw the the color of it but like yeah the boldness of them look great and this is what's print. great with like the smaller pieces because i actually started doing miniature in, uh, in portraits mm. so uh literally six centimeters small portraits of yeah. people and things so having that kind of those happy accents 
accidents on your fabric, you create these wonderful designs and things. And with the birds though, were they, uh, you talked about the different techniques, are they ones that you'd uh, computer design and then got the, or were they freehand? They were the hands, they were hand hands sewn. Hand sewn. They were hand sewn. Machine. So they were my lockdown pieces. Lockdown so pieces. when we were doing, um, when we were all locked down, I couldn't really take my sewing machine home yeah. and I don't really have space at my house to, to do a huge amount of machine embroidery. So I decided to focus heavily on hand embroidery um, and that, and also then on, on the birds that I saw or have seen in, in various different lives. So the kind of, actually this year was the first time I'd ever seen a goldfinch, wow. which I was like, I, it was amazing. There was only about two of them and I think it was at the studio, but yeah, it was, it, it, I've never seen one before in real life. And it was, yeah, the, the, I couldn't believe how small they were. So yeah, I feel, I feel like we've had we've had so many birds running through. I think in this month of February and January and February, it's, it's when they start to come back, every, isn't it? Yeah, every, there's been speaking to a lot of the artists. They were they've been kind of inspired by them or bringing them into their artwork and things like that. And so it's really interesting that it's although everyone's working on completely different mediums and things like that. There's there's so many sometimes subjects or topics or tangents that go through all of them and bring them together. I just like, yeah. I, I think birds because I, I live on a terrace street, so the the mag the, the uh, pied wagtail which I didn't actually bring with me today was the first one I did, mm. um, and that was the only bird I saw during the first lockdown right. because that was the only one that was right next to the co-op because I live in a terrace street which is full of cats, <laughs> but I think that's all that people have is yeah. their back gardens which has just got loads of birds mm. and things in. So I think it's been a real big inspiration. We've got but, yeah. well we've, we've done bird feeders uh, earlier in the week oh, yes. uh, was, with, with, um, with Marfie and Gemma who were, uh, from Camp Curiosity and so we did some bird feeders. I was saying I've got a cat myself so I, I feel too guilty to put up bird yeah, feeders. Yeah I don't put them out. Yeah yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to uh, it feels, I don't it feels want to like a them. dodgy territory yeah so uh, so now what's, what's quite interesting here is, is, is we've, we've, we've had these kind of like two very different colours and starting to kind of blend them in yeah. together with, 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 by mixing the colours yeah. that have already been used between them. So yeah, usually I have an idea of what colours I want for mm. particular projects. And then I always try and do this mixing thing because ironically, these are the ones that I usually always end up using. <laughs> yeah. um, because this, this piece here, I already absolutely love. And But the problem with this process is you love that piece. So you think I'm not going to touch that again. Mm. And then by accident, you flick something else <laughs> on it um, or you go over it. So you, yeah. you can't really get too attached to it as, you, as you're going through it and everything. So it's it's a it's kind of a developing piece as you go really that's what's really interesting about about uh, with your fabric painting i've seen some some timelines of you doing this before as well at the yeah. studio where you've been doing it outside and things like that and you'll make this giant you know like piece of cloth and then and then like you like we were looking at other bits different sections it might just be a, a small section that yeah. makes up a big bit and then it might be a larger section that makes up a completely different part and things like that but i guess you just uh, you can't kind of go, oh, this is exactly what I'm going to get. Yeah. You just should kind of go, you can't, I, I've you got to, do you have a rough idea kind of like what you're going for? Is it, is it very spur of the moment? It, usually, because I, because I work so big, because this is actually quite a small piece for me, <laughs> um, that I only actually paint fabric in the summer. Yeah. And I try and predict what I'm going to need for the next 12 months. Mm. So there's the pieces that I'm doing in the next month. Mm. Yes, I would have an idea. Yeah. Um, but pieces that I... Uh, in say 10 months time I have absolutely no idea the bird pieces they were not planned like that because I wasn't planning on doing yeah. them because I wasn't planning on being locked down away from my sewing machine so it, it just it just depends but sometimes if I think actually I haven't got because I have boxes of different colored kind of things so this will go in my yellow box and then it will be and then I have a black box for the slightly more black pieces um, if, it's, if it's not something that I want I sometimes will paint specific small pieces Nice. just to just, be right yeah. and this is what i need for this piece and i haven't got it but i try not to do that because i then find i just find the smaller pieces just aren't as nice yeah. they're just not they're just not as pretty um but yeah so fantastic well so yeah i can do the other side or we can uh, uh, let's, have a, let, there. let's have a look uh paul we, we've had we've had something come yeah. through. we've had a few things come through all right so um We've had a question saying uh, they love uh, those small bird designs. Are you selling them? I will be. I see, yeah, I will be. Um, I wanted to do um, uh, 10 of them, and I'm on number six at the moment. So once I've done all 10, they will be on sale. Okay. And, and the original pieces themselves will be on sale as well. Do you, would that be one of those where you sell them uh, individually or as part of the other? You, are, you, are you kind of going, oh, these are, these are a set and so that you the can The originals, buy them as a set. I, I can't say yeah, as a yeah. set because yeah. if somebody wants to buy them at, at the original, 
yeah, yeah, they, they yeah. can have them. But uh, yeah, I will create a set of cards because my intention was to turn them into little 15 by 15 cards that are Lovely. exactly the same size. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so they can be sold as a set or as individual, depending Brilliant. on what. But yeah, um, so. We've also had a question saying, if you've got mixture left at the end of bubble painting, uh, could you use that for something else? So could you use it kind of marbling painting, do you reckon? I think the marble painting, it won't work because I think the soap and the oil will react with each other. Um, okay. You can store the bubble painting to do it again in the future. So you don't have to use it all straight away because you will end up with a lot left over. Because okay. it's just the nature, you have to have a certain amount to get the bubbles, but you actually don't use a lot of paint in that process. Yeah. I think that's what we were saying before, isn't it? Once they're mixed, they're, yeah. pretty, they're pretty fine to like, if you've got it, if you put them in like a Tupperware or something like that, I guess yeah. you've got a small, small Or pot. even glass jar yeah. or something like that. Yeah, they, they, they last, but because it's soap, it's, it's, it's automatically kind of keeping itself, keeping itself going. Whoop! Oh, I'm knocking your things over now. <laughs> no problem. This is what you're going to make everyone sit down next year because I broke everything. <laughs> so we, uh, one of the things that we wanted to make sure we talked about in something, a uh, big piece of work for uh, Hazelhurst is uh, believe you're doing some uh, consultation at the moment you want to get people's opinions people's thoughts and things like that is that is that right yeah that's right so um, as I said earlier we've been funded by Arts Council to do a bit of research and development into mm. what we offer in Halton um, and one of the things we want to do is make sure that we hear um, local residents uh, point of view on what they would like so we have an online consultation um, it, it can be for anybody be be you a professional artist or be somebody who just does it for a hobby or mm. somebody who has absolutely never really thought about visual art before um, and thinking actually it would be great to um, to have a look and and, and to, to develop some skills and things Fantastic. so yeah we've got I believe uh, we've got Paul has, managed, has got it up so uh, if you it would be fantastic if, if you're uh, is it local residents that we're looking to, to come it's to? It's anybody, yeah, anybody, anyone. because, uh, yeah, we, we, there's the section within that so that you can tell us whether you are a local resident, because we do need to know. Yeah. But we, we, we would like anybody involved. Because of the, the joys of what's happened in relation to Zoom, we're actually able to, to potentially connect with people slightly further afield. So we don't want people to not comment just because they don't live in yeah. Don't so uh, so brilliant. I believe that uh, Paul, you've got that up on your screen. Is that right? Uh, yeah, it's up on my screen, and I will post the link in the chat as well and, and on, on all our social platforms. So uh, if you go to the Hazelhurst uh, website, uh, which I believe we've got a little graphic for, uh, which Ian can pop up for us in a second, which is would be www hazelhurststudios.co.uk remember a l e after after the z uh, if you're anything like me you can get it get it wrong hazelhurststudios.co.uk i think if you google i'm sure it'll be one of the first ones that comes up but if you yeah. go from the onto the uh, blog section you'll be able to find your way through there and complete that for them and, and get them that feedback. So if you've enjoyed doing this session today and, and you want to help out Hazelhurst, which I'm sure we all do, make sure we pop on there and complete that form so that we can, uh, yeah, so that we can uh, help them get the feedback and the details that, that they need. Right, so let's pop back over here and let's see how we're getting on with, with this. I, I realise I've just done that really quickly. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I've not finished the other half really quickly, but I'm going to do some flicks in a minute. So Flicks in a minute, yeah, yeah. That, that's fine. Um, but yeah, so this this was actually so this is this is the leftovers from last time I was painting. So we had a donation from um, a local um, sweet dealer who uh, had these tubs, which was amazing. We've got so many of these, yeah. um, and these have been great for me to store fabric. So at the end of this, I'll probably chuck all the bits of the fabric paint inside yeah. one of the tubs, and then because you still end up with some really nice colours, even though it's slightly brown <laughs> um, and yeah so that's what this this is the leftovers and I try and use the previous paints for this time that so. was when I was talking about when I was a, a young person trying to get purple that's about as close I reckon as I ever probably got to purple yeah. in, in doing it so um, I know we've mentioned talked about Hazelhurst for anyone that's not been to Hazelhurst you guys are based right on the high street aren't you yeah. in, in Runcorn so you're right there uh, in the heart of things uh, 
and um, and normally again in normal times there's there's workshop spaces and there's there's, there's art spaces and, uh, and I know we can't probably talk about it too much but there's there's a lot of demand and things like that aren't there for, uh, yeah. for from, from spaces I know that you're always looking how you can develop and, and expand what yeah. you're doing yeah so so there's 10 residence artists at, um, at Hazelhurst we have space for 12 but some of the artists have two spaces mm. uh, we do have a workshop room but we don't have great access because yeah. it's, it's it's right up a, um, a set of really horrendous stairs I'm going to be honest yeah. so we yeah, we are part of the research and development is to try and make sure that our space is accessible as much mm. as possible in the offer that we do um, so yeah that, that's part of the development hopefully is to try and find somewhere that's a little bit a way of interacting with people that may not be able to get into actually our building um, so yeah it's, it's a great space because we have quite a lot of equipment there so we have like printing presses and, and various different uh, techniques in relation and, it's, and I'm gonna be honest the biggest thing is the space mm. is to be able to do things this sort of size in a space that you, people aren't going to shout at you if you get paint on the floor. Mm. So it, it, it's that, and it's and that great like mind so you can be working on something and somebody comes in and you can say, do you think this works? Do you think that that kind of works well with what I've created? Um, and have that person who's also creative and not necessarily in the same field, but has that understanding of how the creative process works. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a really great space i'm so happy i found it mainly mainly through claire's social media that's how i found yeah. it on twitter you um, guys are great on social media to be fair that's uh, just no, that's claire uh, yeah, that's yeah, just no, claire um, honestly <laughs> and, and of course uh, we've mentioned it in a few of the streams now one of the uh, cultivate partners and, and we were always talking about what a, what a great community of artists and creatives that we that we have in Holton all working together uh, on different projects and I know that um, the, the Hazelhurst are always working in partnership with some of the other organizations yeah. in Holton uh, to, to deliver different types of art projects and 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 really uh, just such a great I feel like there's such a great uh, vibe at the moment in the area in terms of yeah people wanting to work together and, and try out new things and, and yeah. develop and so yeah it's been it's been fantastic being on the LSEP has been amazing to connect with well with you guys and with all the other cultural kind of organization like with the place for us and, mm. and the studio and all that sort of thing so it, it's it's been great to to really network with everybody brilliant fantastic how are we getting on here now what so are the how at what point at this point here how much more would you be looking to do there normally would you be kind of going i'm going to fill the into all the edges here or yeah so normally i would be moving it around so mm. i didn't want to do that today because i didn't want to cause too much mess. <laughs> um so i would normally have actually started with this very much on the on the edge here Mm. done that edge and then moved it along um, the problem with embroidery because of when you use hoop and things um, you actually lose about two inches of the edge of the entire fabric anyway right. because to get it into a hoop you need a gap of about two inches of either side mm. uh, although, so you're going to lose that that gap so I try not to do too much along this because I'll end up with a really beautiful piece that I know yeah. that I'm never going to be able to use <laughs> So, um, but yeah, it would kind of do this piece and then I would normally hang up this one and then I would do another one. So I'd normally do a whole day of just doing this and nothing else and get incredibly messy and get paint everywhere. I was going to say, obviously we've been, we've been putting, well on this side we were putting water down first and we were splashing, yeah. whereas this side we've done it more dry. Uh, how long does a piece like this normally take to dry? And is it just a case of like, like, like you would a piece of washing over a line? Yeah, or, basically, yeah. yeah. So, and actually you end up with really nice effects. So the ones that we've got wet, because we did that, I did that first on for a particular reason because I've obviously got to transport this back today. Yeah. So normally I'd actually probably do the, the wet one last because then when you hang it up it actually then will drip as well mm. so you end up with lots of nice effects I doing that as well dripping, yeah. yeah so we like i say at studio we've got uh, some great facilities so we actually have two indoor washing lines mm -hmm. so i hang up on those washing lines and we also have an outside space that if it's glorious sunshine it will dry in a couple of hours yeah. um if it's not it, if it's inside i have to leave it overnight and people come into this wonderful fabric but um yeah so it, it just depends on how much water have used and, and how thick the paint is at various places but fantastic but yeah. how's it how's it working with with 10 other artists and, and then at the show i'm sure that you've probably not seen them as much as, as no as not at the, moment. at the moment but yeah um so it, the artists work in very very different ways so it's a case of some of us are so vast majority of the time i'm on i'm at my desk mm. and nowhere else because i just need my machine and, and hand embroidery so it's only every so often i would need this big space some artists need it quite regularly um, so uh, they would be booked in a lot more and some artists are just literally on their space and, and nowhere else really so um, but we do have a kind of a booking system so we have a, 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 a handwritten book system actually in on in the studio mm -hmm. and then we also have a digital one so people can have a check 
to make sure that there's nobody else in there. Because we also have other, other organisations that would normally come into the studio we aren't allowed at the moment, mm. uh, which is uh, Holton, um, Hazelhurst Print. So we have a print group and we also have mark makers that also use the space as well. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's a very busy studio. In normal times, it's a very busy studio. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, there's a lot less people in there at the moment because we've had to restrict it to just our resident artists to keep everybody yeah. safe. So. Fingers crossed for later on this year uh, as, as things hopefully develop for the better and we get yeah. more people uh, have been vaccinated and things like that. Fingers crossed we'll be starting to see more and more uh, people being able to go back to the studio yeah. and being able to... Uh, but the hope is that as a minimum, the Culture HQ space, mm. because it's so big, yes. um, hopefully we'll be able to do some of the things that we've not been able to do, at least there. Yeah. Um, for the time being, even while things are still a bit different, so fingers yeah. crossed. Yeah, for the culture HQ, I can't wait to kind of uh, to, to get in there. And I've not actually been in and had a look yet, but I'm, I'm, I've, I've not heard, seen it either. I've heard it's no, massive and, it's and right in the in the shopping centre. I know center, I, so. I know of the space because I've done a previous project there before, but yeah, I've not actually been in there since they've taken yeah, everything out. And everything, so. I, I believe they were doing it up and things like that. So uh, yeah. yeah, I can't wait to uh, to see it once it's. Uh, once it's been yeah. uh, once it's been sorted. So, uh, what are you doing now? Do you want to talk us through what what this step is? So, this this is just the the, the kind of titivating step, yeah. I suppose. It's a case of I'm looking at it and thinking, actually, do I like the pattern of that? So, what I actually did on this piece was um, on this section. I thought actually, it'd be really nice to have a contrast in colour. Unfortunately, because the yellow's watered down, it's it's not that strong. So, mm. you can see here that the white is a lot stronger yeah. than it is on the yellow because the white hasn't been watered down as much. So you do lose a bit of kind of pigment. Um, so I kind of wanted that contrasty colour. So while I said don't necessarily mix all of the primary colours together, if you did want that last kind of, actually it'd be great if there was an orange, because I actually would really love to do orange, but I don't have any mixed up at the moment. So to do some orange on this piece to really lift that blue, yeah. you can do that at the end of um, the piece. And in fact, actually that blue piece, Claire, would be great to show that. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, so let's have another look at a, at a piece. Well, here's one we've made earlier. True, yeah. fr true blue Peter fa uh, fashion. Oh, orange and blue looks really nice. Together, so it? yeah, so it's got, so I did the blue background and I had some left over from a previous print, I think on this one. And then I thought actually some orange would be really lovely to go over the top. And you just don't mix it in much. It's a case of you just kind of flick it on and then do a bit of a sweep over to get some of those kind of slight spreads and then and then leave it. You don't mess around with it too much. I was gonna say, I think Because otherwise you end up with brown, don't you <laughs> I think that's probably one of the hardest things with, with art sometimes, isn't it? Is knowing when to stop. So when to stop, yeah. 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 So yeah. I'm not I'm not gonna touch this piece anymore because I've thrown yellow on it. Even though I'm not 100% happy with that yellow, um, I, th I think I'm just gonna leave this side at and, that point. And when it dries, I know we said we might get some drips and things like that, you know, as, as it's drying, but you, is it is it, similar colour to what, what it is when it's wet or is it, is it completely going it's different? It's not or? completely different, it's a lot lighter. Yeah. So um, the the Galaxy piece that I had there, Claire, if you have a look at that, oh, is probably, this Galaxy piece. yeah, this is my favourite piece that I've done. Other way, other side. Other side? That's, my, that's my favourite piece that I've done. Fantastic. So that was really dark when I would finished it, when I was painting it. And then when it, as it dried, it's then gotten a lot lighter, but you can still, still, still see it's quite, dark in some places so fabric paint will just naturally dry lighter because you've not got that water darkening the paint um, and the fabric so you you don't so while I know what it looks like now mm -hmm. I don't 100% yeah. know that that's what it's going to be like when it's dried um, so it, it is a bit but it's better than the dyeing method so if you were going to mm. use fabric dyes rather than fabric paints that's a completely different yeah ball game that what you're going to get is not what you see right now at all so it's that I guess I, I guess that could be both exciting but also disappointing sometimes it really annoyed me because yeah. I've, yeah. I've gone through that process and it just I just couldn't cope with it it's also yeah. why I didn't do ceramics at college because I didn't like I didn't know what was going to come out of the yeah. kiln I guess it's like when you're painting painting a room as well because sometimes it's a little bit darker a little bit lighter isn't it when you put it on the paint and then you yeah. when it dry you go oh oh it's, I don't like that yeah, I don't like the color yeah, now yeah, it's I'm, too I'm, light I'm, now I've got, yeah. I've got, I've got, having said that, my, my house is the most boringly white painted thing in the world at the moment. And as yeah, and it, as yeah. is mine, because yeah. you put art up and said, that's my yeah, thoughts. That, you only have to do it once. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so it's just a case of, it, it, it is different, um, but I kind of have an idea of what it's going to look like. So I know that black is probably going to get a bit lighter and the green is going to get a little bit less vibrant, but not too much. It's still going to be that pretty Sometimes. strong colour. So, so yeah. Brilliant. All right. Uh, while while we're all uh, finishing off, there, I'll just I'll just cut over to to Paul for a second. See if we've had uh, any more comments through on any of the platforms or anything like that from people uh, getting in touch. Yes. Yeah, so we've had quite a lot of people say 
amazing. Uh, they can't wait to give it a go and they're looking forward to it. Giving loads of different, yeah, I think you've inspired loads of people to try mm -hmm. loads oh, of good. different things. Um, but we have had a comment uh, asking if uh, any suggestions on if they wanted to get it printed, uh, where should they get it printed? Oh, for getting your pieces yeah. printed off. Um, it depends on what you, how you want it to look. Yeah. They all have their different pros and cons. Um, I'm not sure the one that we use regularly. We don't really have one at the studio regularly. It, it depends. It yes. really does depend on massive differences. So if you're wanting to produce a lot of them, then you're kind of outweighing the cost of the individual unit yeah. to the quality. If you're just getting one done, I would go to somewhere like Moo, Moo Print. They're really expensive, so I wouldn't be doing it through them because as an individual unit, it's just too expensive. Okay. But if it was for you, it's worth spending that because their quality is great. Um, but yeah, it, it really does depend. Because then there's, then there's a pro of going locally. So there is one up at the Heath, which I think is Halton Printing Company, something like that, um, which means you can then go and have a conversation with them. So mm -hmm. it, it just really does depend on, it's yeah. the headache that every artist has of trying to figure out, because it's not the same for each artist either. So no. what works for one just doesn't necessarily work for another. So. Yeah, it's about looking around, isn't it? And yeah. meeting, the, meeting the printers, isn't it? And so yeah, and what? having, if there's, ones that, if there's one that is literally just online and has no way of physically having a conversation with them either via email or phone i wouldn't go with them yeah because it's just you can't have that dialogue basically yeah. i think we're, we're not printing pieces of art but it was really interesting what you said then yeah there's the we, when we're doing like mass numbers of things that you it's it, it's quite easy to find places online for for doing printing but then when you're doing this the, the, you know you only need a small number one or two that's when we generally go locally and, you, and exactly that's so yeah. you can have that conversation, have that with conversation. Them and stuff. And it is quite expensive especially yeah. if you just want to do a couple because that's the nature of printing isn't it yeah, yeah. when yeah. you want to do nine million of them suddenly it comes down really cheap because there's, yeah, there's yeah. places like vista print that you can get hundreds done really cheaply mm. but the quality is just not good enough for it'd be fine for say business cards and things like that but for an actual art print it's just not good enough quality mm. really so it, it really does depend on a lot of stuff um brilliant Fantastic. right i'm trying to think what to do on that last bit of corner yeah we've got one last bit here one last we? Corner. Out, yeah, yeah this is the the showstopper this is <laughs> yeah this will be building up i'm too. tempted to like really throw a span in the works and i said i wouldn't get red out but i'm tempted to get red out because oh, yeah. you it's know got, it's quite red good. Having said that, I might not have any bed. <laughs> no, I do. No, I do. Oh, well, it's all right. I'll get out your way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm chasing. I feel like I'm chasing you around the table at the moment. Well, yeah. normally yeah. this has been very weird because normally I'm literally walking around the table <laughs> just constantly, and it has been a little odd to kind of sit there and go, "No, you can't. You can't do that. You have to stand still yeah. for a second. You have to think about it as, yeah. as, as, as we're moving yeah, around. But. Oh, okay. That's the big bit there. That, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but no. As we found out, or I've been talking about, maybe that's going to be the but that's going to back my, end up being the bit that that really uh, stands out. Well, this really is the thing you, you don't know, and also you get different effects as well. So I try and have a clean water, which I've not done. Oh no, I have done it. It's over there, um, because actually, you know, you've got lovely green water here, and then you're going to use that over the red, and you're like, it might create some lovely um, effect, which it hasn't. So, but sometimes <laughs> you do. You end up with like a an odd kind of color combination on, but on that first kind of like brush stroke you got almost like a uh, the uh, the old uh, when they were doing 3d glasses you know it's like oh, green yeah. on one eye and, and red on the other eye when you're looking through them and things like that so. um oh i'm sorry whatever, happened to, those, whatever <laughs> happened to those whatever happened to those yeah the magic eyes when you were watching on I, TV they, ne and stuff they like never that. worked on me i'm gonna be honest I've, the magic I've, eyes. I've never ever once in my life been able to see what, what, what i I'd think i think it was i always thought it was just a massive con practical joke on me that people made these books and you're just like you can see stuff in them and i, I like, genuinely no. think that if you are dyslexic, because yeah. I'm dyslexic, you can't see them. Because everyone um, I've met who is dyslexic can't see them. Let, let's test it out. I know that Ian's dyslexic as well. Ian, magic eye tests ever work on you for the, in them booklets with the different things? Here he is. No. No, maybe see, that's yeah, it. Maybe I, you I want genuinely something. think if you're dyslexic, you can't see them. Yeah. yeah. Wow. There you go. So, so yeah, uh, it's a. I, I always thought it was a con. I yeah. always thought it was a con. Let's see. Uh, let's see if we get anything in the comments. Are there any dyslexics any in dyslexic the comments? Any dyslexic in there? Yeah, yeah. If you can't see Come magic on, dyslexic love. Uh, there's, there's no one. No one <laughs> just, yeah, you just put it out, but I, I will let you know. I was, uh, yeah. Let I us was, know if, if any if anyone comes through. The um, I've always I'm quite a big fan of those. Um, 
Uh, do you know the ones where you look at them and it almost looks like the page is moving because of the uh, the way that the shapes oh, are combined together Ill. and stuff like that? And yeah. There's ones with uh, with lines mm. and dots, isn't there, where you suddenly start seeing black dots splat around the place. So I have always been interested with those types of things where you were, um, you know, there's, there's certain patterns and certain things that can trick your eyes into doing stuff. I think naturally we like doing a lot of animation and just just things like the persistence of vision that lets animation and film yeah. possible is, is an interesting thing for me so anything that we can do to uh kind of trick our eyes or make it make them do interesting things has always been an interesting uh, i don't know why just one of those things that you ain't quite like but yeah i've always been pretty good at words wally as well yeah i, I was I, always I, very good at words wally i, I, I was always very good I at words wally normally but yeah but, the, but like seeing the picture behind it that, that's you know what that's that's really interesting though what you just said there and, yeah and, and I, from our from our consortium in the uh in the, in the, in the, <laughs> from our yeah, extensive selection yeah, of people we're, we're gonna say that, that yeah. it's true um, no, well, I always find, because I have um, Erlen syndrome as well, so if, if I see, uh, it's light sensitivity, so text mm. and things move when I see them without my glasses on. Um, and those, so those optical illusions really mm. don't agree with me. My, my eyes kind of go a bit, no, we're not, we're not happy now and we're going to stop working. Um, but yeah, I'm convinced that magic eyes do not work for people who are dyslexic. <laughs> Absolutely convinced. We've got, got a comment in there, Paul, have we? Yeah, we've got two coming in there. Fantastic. See them, but they're not dyslexic. So. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe they need to get tested. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, magic eye equals uh, migraines. My, uh, my, yeah. So. We got, is, it, is anyone actually? Is anyone actually a fan of magic eyes? Or they, how I, how I are they like selling them. these books for so know. long? Yeah. I like no them. I can see them. I like them. Dentist. But. It reminds me of dentist waiting rooms and things like that. They always seem to have them like kind of scattered about. Yeah, and then you end up having a migraine to go into yeah, the dentist. Yeah, into the it was dentist. like, yeah. They pass the time, so I pass like the time. Them. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, all right. Well, yeah. I didn't think that that's where we were going to go. No, is that's this, not where we're going to go. We've actually unveiling that we've done a massive magic eye. Yes, this is the thing. So yeah, in here see. is a unicorn yeah, yeah. somewhere. That, that, that you're able to. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I think I was debating whether to put a last bit of blue on that, but I think it might ruin it, so I'm not oh. going to. I'm it's, going to stop. It's feeling very uh, something this size. I can't help but think back to an art attack. It's feeling very art yeah. attack. I yeah. Love that attack. It's Buchanan. one of my favourites. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, it's, I can't remember why I did it this size. I think it was just a case of I had, I had a huge piece of fabric and I mm. couldn't be bothered cutting it up, so I started doing it this big, and it just, it just works. It, re it really creates these lovely mistakes and happy accidents mm. and it's things that you can use for, um, for various different bits of my embroidery and things. But like I said. You can do this on t-shirts and on bags. I would say if you're going to do it on either of those is to get a piece of cardboard in between. Yep. So if you're on a t-shirt, just put it inside the t-shirt just so that you keep those backs separate. Mm. Um, just because it makes the drying process a little bit easier. Piece of cardboard. Um, nice. But yeah, and then, and then it's basically a case of just um, try not to mix all of the primary colors together is the main thing is otherwise you end up with brown and it's a bit of a mess. So something that I was saying uh, one of the other ones is I've always, I love Art Attack when I was younger, but I would always like, you'd start making it and then by the time you got to the next one, you were like, oh, that's not stuck down yet and he's moved on to that. And you were trying to memorize all the things. The great thing about the way we're doing this today, if you want to re-look back on yeah, fabric on painting, how you do this, if you want yeah. to look back at the bubble painting and how we got done, don't go back to the competition bit, just skip that. You can skip that bit <laughs> section. But, the, um, uh, but we, um, you can just rewind this, watch it back, have another go, uh, yeah. and you can go back as many times as you want. So if you've done it today live with us, but then you're gonna go come back to it, you might go, oh, do you know what, I need a little bit of a reminder. Just go back onto YouTube or Facebook yeah. or wherever you, you're watching us today, and you'll be able to find the video again and watch back and do it along with us yeah. as many times as you like. So. I'd love to see people trying to do some fabric, massive <laughs> fabric paintings. I would love it. <laughs> Definitely. That's a great point. If you have done any bubble painting or fabric painting, or you are going to do some uh, in the, in the, in the, over the weekend or in the next coming weeks, please uh, let us know. Uh, if you use the hashtag uh, Holton MF21, we will pick that up. We'll be able to see it and we'll be keeping an eye on that. So any pictures or any uh, ideas, it could be of yourself. It could be of the artwork that you make or the process that you've gone by doing it. Uh, let us know. Uh, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of them, Holton Makefest. Look at Ian, Ian earning his money there. <laughs> like Fantastic. Thanks very much, Ian, um, going on about it, uh, going on all the different things. Uh, 
if once you had done this, what what's the process now? You've got your finished kind of a fabric painting. What would be, how do you go from this to one of the fabulous pieces of art works that we saw before? So there's a lot more work to do before this bit. So it would be a case of, uh, obviously it would be hung and, and dried and, and it needs to be completely dry. I would then actually iron. So these fabric paints are to set um, mm. into the fabric. You need to heat them. I mean, Lee, I have washed things before I've ironed them by accident and they've not come out, but oh. I wouldn't risk it if you want this colour sort of thing. Um, that would be devastating, wouldn't it? If you just put them in the wash and they're perfectly just, clean. Oh yeah, perfectly <laughs> yeah, clean when yeah. you come out. So in theory, they should they should still stay, but they do say on the packaging, like iron them. I actually mm. take them to my mother's house and use her uh, tumble dryer because it's the heat, not the iron. Right. So if you stick them in a tumble dryer for say, yeah. you know, 20 minutes and get them quite hot, yeah. which is why if you use cotton, that makes it a lot easier because mm. you're not going to have any problems in the tumble dryer or heat or anything. Um, you can then make sure it's set. It's, it's only a, 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 a precaution I do because I actually don't wash my pieces mm. because they end up being uh, artworks. But if you are going to use it on T-shirts and things, I would do that step and then maybe even do it twice potentially. Um, so then that would then, this would then basically be um, cut up a little bit just because there's some quite clear gaps. Yeah of like, you know, and, and, and it depends if I really like certain sections, I might not cut it up. Um, and then I would, once I'm designing something, it would be a case of whatever it is, I'd be thinking, right, okay, if it's, say for example, if it's a particular type of bird that's quite uh, red based, then I might think, right, actually it'd be really nice for it to be on a yellow mm -hmm. background, and then it would then go on to that. Um, and then there's a whole process of how I transfer my designs onto the fabric with like charcoal paper, carbon paper, sorry, not charcoal paper. And then it goes into the hoop, and then you sit there for hours okay. with needle and thread. Well, if any of the if this if this piece gets it into any of your pieces, please use the hashtag Rachel. I will do. You want to I see the whole do. make fest piece of art? Where they, they get, well, maybe we could have an auction from these people that are that are commenting on on it to to, uh, to, to well, get. Well, my, the, uh, my the social pieces. media, it, not my social media, my my sewing machine is hopefully going to be serviced soon. So once it's come back, because I very rarely use yellow and black. Yellow and I mean, black. I really don't use yellow and black very often. So I, I might I yeah. might make something make fest. Well, I'm going to say, yeah, that. but we got. I guess you got to go for a different colour in front in front of it, haven't you? Because like, you know, well, wasps the danger. Like, what I, mean, I was you, thinking yeah. was uh, you would do depending on what the end design mm. was, is that you would have a black focus design on that piece and then a yellow focus oh, design on that piece. Nice, yeah. And because thread is actually very 3D, even though that has got yellow in it, it still stands out quite a bit. Stands out, Because yeah. it's that it's, it is a 3D thing. It's actually technically a sculpture, really. Yeah, the know. texture of it. On top so of it as well. yeah, so it, it's 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 a case of you know. But that's that's why I wanted to do that the wet method rather than the dry method because I then wouldn't be able to do that. Brilliant. Well, so. thank you so much for coming in today no and showing it's us been fun. all of our bubble paint and all of our fabric paint. Thanks for answering all the questions that have been that have been coming through uh, for Paul. Just before we go, I want to give uh, one more plug for the the uh, the form that we're looking for people to, to fill in yeah, to get your opinions, your thoughts, that. and things like that. Uh, so to get to that, if you go to the Hazelhurst website, which is uh, www.hazelhurststudios.co.uk. Uh, thanks Ian for popping that on the screen. And it's just inside the blog section there and inside the, you'll be able to uh, get hold of the uh, feedback form uh, and be able to complete that and get and get that sorted. Other big shout out to the, to the, to the uh, social medias for yourself and for Hazelhurst. Yeah. So uh, for yourself, dead yeah. easy, Rachel Prime. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just have to remember the, the yeah. A before the E. A, A before the E. A yeah. before thanks, the E and the Mom Rachel uh, on, on Facebook <laughs> and Twitter and Instagram. Uh, and uh, for Hazelhurst Studio, a little bit more jiggering about, but uh, let's go. I'll, I'll, I'll copy. I'm not trying to remember these ones. I'll copy them off the screen as you come on. So, uh, so Twitter, we've got at Hazelhurst Art on uh, what's going up next. Facebook, we've got at of hashtag forward slash Hazelhurst Studios. And last but not least on Instagram, we have Hazelhurst Artists. And that's where you can catch up with all the artwork that Hazelhurst is producing and all the different yeah. news about new projects and different things that are coming up. So yeah, yeah just to say thanks again so much for coming in and, and taking guys. part. It's been absolutely brilliant. If we get any more comments and things like that coming through, we'll make sure we forward them on to you so that you can yeah. answer them and get back to people. But yeah. Uh, thanks everyone so much for tuning in today. We have another fantastic art project coming up this afternoon. So please come back, however you're watching us, if you're on Facebook, YouTube or Twitter, come back today at 3 p.m. And we have Claire, who is not on camera at the moment, but she's gonna, <laughs> she's gonna be doing some flower pressing for us uh, this, this afternoon. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to finding out about that as well. Thanks everyone so much for tuning in this morning. And yeah, we'll see you this afternoon. Take care and see you later.